Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Lenovo IdeaPad 330S model here and in this video what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you guys step by step how to open it up and how you can repaste, clean up and clean up the fan, the heat sink, everything like that so you do your own maintenance, your own service instead of giving it to somebody to do it for you and this maintenance you should be doing it every year every two years i'll recommend it depending the usage of the laptop the environment the dust everything it comes there's many factors but i always suggest every year or year and a half maximum every two years you should open it up clean it at least or repaste if your paste is really dried up all right before we get it started, you want to power off the laptop, make sure it's not in a standby or is not on hibernate. And you want to flip it upside down. You want to grab yourself a screwdriver set. I use the iFixit tool set kit. They come with a pro version, which they give you an extra tools, which I have somewhere over there. And from this tool set, we're going to be using Philips number zero. And also you will need an opening tool you can use the opening tool that they come in the pro version or you can simply use a metallic guitar pick which are really tough and smooth edges which prevents it from scratching the case all right once we have the laptop upside down by the way this is a model 330s-15 ikb this applies for any 330s models so yours might have a little video chip or doesn't but i'm going to explain that in a bit all right, go ahead and remove all the screws at the bottom cover. These are screws are M2 screws. They are all the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. Also, I realized that only a few of my viewers always subscribe to my channel or clicking that like button. It will be a really nice and great help if you guys find my content helpful. And if you want to support me, just click that like button or subscribe. I really appreciate it. All right, once you remove the bottom screws, what you want to do, you want to open up the laptop in 45 degree angle. So you want to grab your guitar pick and you want to stick it between the bottom and the top cover about two or three millimeters inward. And what you want to do, you just want to twist it and do this walk around. I mean, walk around and just drag it around and go all the way to the corners, do the side, go all the way to the back corner, to the left and right side. Once you did the sides and the front, go to the back. This one is already go. Oh, look, it just can. If it didn't come out, just go. Let me see. If it didn't come out, grab it here. Then just twist, 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 and it should come out pretty easy. Right. This is the bottom cover. If you want to go ahead, go ahead and use our old toothbrush and clean the mesh, dust mesh right here. And down here, we're gonna see the battery, the main hard drive, which I upgraded to a solid state drive, and the fan and the heat sink that goes under this shielding. Before we do anything, we wanna always remove the battery when you wanna do your own service. It's, so grab these cables and pull it backwards so you disconnect the jack right there. Okay. Now, first thing first, we wanna remove this shield by removing three screws. One, two, three screws. These are M2 screws, the same size as the bottom cover. So you can just mix it with them. And once you remove the screws right there, you can just grab the shield right here. There's a tiny clip that holds the shield. So just lift up towards the ceiling and it should come out pretty easy. Now, this model doesn't provide you with a GPU or memory RAMs on the VRAMs yours might have so what's yours gonna look like extra tubing going all the way here another heat block like this one over here with a three screws extras right over here like you see three screws for the cpu and three screws for here if your models if your model has a gpu installed so you might have to remove extra three screws right here so in this model doesn't give you only gives you a cpu before we remove anything right here we have to remove the 
fan right here. To remove the fan, just go ahead and peel off this tape. Peel it off. You don't need these tapes actually. And untangle the cable for the LCD right here. Remove the cable and three two screws for the fan. Okay. Then you can grab the fan. There's a cable for the fan right here. You can pull this cable back, so disconnect the jack right here. Once we have this one loosened up, now we can go ahead and remove the heat sink by removing this screw right there. The screw have a C lock on them, so the screws will not come out. You only have to loose them up. Just do a few turn and leave them there. And do the GPU in case if you have it. Then you want to grab it from here and lift it up. So there you go. You don't have to rip this foam over here. You can just flip it over. Use an old toothbrush and clean the duct right here. And also clean up the fan right over there. So we're going to put this to one side. We're going to grab ourselves a working towel. I'll leave the link in the description again for these materials that I use. These are the shop towels. And uh, you're going to use a 95% at least isopropylic alcohol. I was going to say acid. And uh, you want to soak it right away here. This is not conductive. And what you want to do, you want to remove the excess of the thermal paste over the CPU. So clean it up nicely. Don't worry about touching the motherboard. Nothing's going to happen. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't even use anti-static or anything like that. And anybody that I know that they work here, they never use it in even different shops. So don't worry about it. It's really hard to shock the motherboard by touching it only. All right, we're going to remove the extra thermal paste over the heat sink. This one is really toasted right there, so I'm gonna flip it over, put extra more alcohol. The alcohol really blends it and it makes it easy for you to clean it. All right, now there's a, a tiny trick I'm gonna show you guys. Grab any copper cleaner solution with a paste or liquid format or any silver cleaner. Um, and what you want to do, you want to clean it with that one right over here. And it's going to remove the smell or it's going to remove the tiny layer that it has over the copper. So you get pure copper exposed. So what you want to do, you want to grab yourself a working towel one corner. So just peel it off one corner. And you just want to do it like that. You want to grab your solution. Yours could be paste. Mine is in a liquid format. You can get this one on any jewelry. So look at this one. Once I go right here, look at the difference. I'm exposing the pure copper right there. So clean up nicely. Look, I'm going to clean right over here. Look at the difference. You see, that's why I'm, I always suggest or recommend that you use a copper cleaning solution or silver cleaning solution. They are really, really handy. And the thermal conduct is going to be really good. So grab your thermal paste, your favorite thermal paste. I'm going to be using an Arctic MX4. You want to grab tiny. Do I last one more pass on the CPU? If I put my fingerprint on it. One tiny line on a big die, a uh, tiny blob right on the middle one. Don't worry if you put too much. With the Arctic MX4, it's just going to spread all around and the excess is going to be over the PCB on the CPU and it's not going to do any damage. All right, so bring the, this is very important. Also clean up your GPU if you have and clean the other side of the GPU on the heatsink. You want to bring it evenly down, align it straight and do not, do not, I'll, Always say, put your finger in the middle, do not lift it up the heatsink again, otherwise you're going to create that air bubbles. Cross stitch them, so do this one, that one, always cross stitch these ones. They actually give you a number one, two, three, 
but if you pay attention this is funny in here it says what it says number four five and six that means this was one two three four five six so as long as you process stitch these ones so what you want to do next first always always plug in the fan that's always everybody forget to plug it in so just bring it from the one side squeeze it right in there and put the two screws for the fan you do not need to put the tape and just run the cable for the lcd right over here and the last thing would be to grab the power jack uh, before we put the power jack let's put the shield right here so grab the shield align it over these clips right here there's a one two three four five clips right there so it has to grab it from these corners so align it i'm aligning this corner make sure you have to pinch it and align this one over here and then let go the rest and just push it down push down that one this one this one over here so you see tiny arrows here these arrows indicate that there are clips right there and we're going to put the three screws for the this shield one over there one over here also and uh, one more thing you guys should know it's really important before you guys panic i'm going to give you a heads up always when you remove the main battery from the motherboard and you plug it in just like this and when you want to boot it up your initial boot is going to take about five to ten seconds the screen is just going to flicker it's going to go back black and white or it just might not do anything just wait for five to ten seconds and then it's going to boot up the reason is because once you remove the battery then you plug it back in it's going to detect the components and it's trying to configure the bios so it can boot up so this is normal and the second restart is just going to be normal and the last thing would be to just grab the bottom cover align it over and just push the corners down push the top mat everything make sure you those clicks and the last thing would be to put in the bottom cover screws and that covers this video and i hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out if you have any questions or requests leave them in the comment area and i will try to answer them and help you guys out and again if you guys find this video helpful please click that thumbs up button and thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video